up vintage motorcycle fans, Bill Wheeler here, Wheelhouse Garage. Welcome to season two, episode six of A Bike and a Beer. Super special episode today. We're at the amazing Scotty's Workshop with Scotty Sharp, the BMW guru, and we're looking at an awesome bike. What are we looking at today, Scotty? Bill, thanks for coming to the shop. No problem. You so made the, good to be here. You made the huge trek over here. Yeah, right? My Across neighbor. Down. <laughs> uh, this is my personal rider. Like when there's a vintage ride, typically I'm going to be on this bike. And it is a 1951, I'm going to say, R51-3. That's had some upgrades and modifications done to it. Sweet. And of course, we got to have a beer to go with it today. And so I had to choose a German beer, of Ooh, course. Achtung. Yeah. <laughs> this is a Gefell Kulsch. Now, I thought it was Kulsch, but I looked it up and I believe that, that it is pronounced Kulsch. And uh, I've never had this beer before, but so, it is a German we'll beer. We'll have to just continue to say Kulsch. Yeah, Kulsch. <laughs> Let's crack Thanks it Thanks for the beer, Bill. Hey, man. Cheers. Cheers. Let's see what it tastes like. Smooth, a little Ooh. sweet. Yeah, it is a little sweet, huh? Yeah, yep. Yeah. I usually say, what does it taste like? Yeah, almost a little bit of honey. Yeah, I would say. Yeah. It's good stuff. This is an interesting fact that I just learned today. It's been a hot day. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> it really has been. Kulsch, there's actually a signed document agreed on that Kulsch is a type of beer and it can only be brewed in Cologne, Germany. Oh, really? Yeah, which I looked up is about six and a half hours away from uh, BMW Motorrad's headquarters. Very cool. But um, yeah, that's good. a good beer, man. Yeah, very drinkable. Yeah. What's the history on this bike? Like, where did you, where did you find this thing? That is an easy question. Well, um, many of you who who have been listening to my story, because yeah. I've told this story many times. Right, right, right. The way that I got into this whole mess right here was because I met an old man named Joe Groger. Joe Groger. And he was a really cool guy. That's right. I, I originally had a 1962 R60-2, which I bought to go on vintage rides. Got it. Because I didn't have a vintage bike that was right. what I thought would be, you know, a good bike to ride. I yeah. had a CD350 at the time. Sure. And I bought this R60-2, and in my quest to learn about it and make it rideable and so on, I went to a page on the internet that talked about Joe's shop. And the fact that he, you know, welcomes people to come into his shop and ask questions yeah. and hang out and so on. And that page probably is still online. Uh, a guy named Marco Hyman had that website, and he has it's probably still up online. But anyway, uh, in Joe's collection of bikes, uh, which was pretty epic, yeah. he had uh, this particular uh, arrangement where he had he had taken an early plunger frame bike like an R51 or okay. something like that yeah and he put an R69 S engine into it so basically it's an early conversion it's a it's God. a 50s bike with a 60s motor and did he love the plunger platform like as far as rideability or did he just like the style of it he probably liked the style okay um, it's he, really cool. he, he didn't have a straight slash two I don't think Joe was ever really happy with with <laughs> stock bikes right so all of his bikes were heavily modified, and his his uh, his early bike, which was a plunger frame bike with the R69S motor in it. Now his bike was really special. It actually had an R68 motor in it. Really? So he t he took an R51 and he put an R68 motor in it, and he hot rodded it okay. uh, and made it super special. So anyway, this bike was at Joe's shop. And he was building it as a second bike, basically. I see. And by then, when I met Joe, he was 92. Whoa. So he, he was already up there, and he had really stopped working on a lot of projects at that point in his life. Okay. So after a few years of me tinkering with the bike and so on, yeah. he's like, you seem to like that bike a lot. And, yeah. you know, I was continuing to build it and, and finish it. I even painted the front fender, which was not painted. Oh, really? And I, I, you know, it, I, it was at Joe's place, so I... Took the fender home, yeah. painted it, brought it back, put it back on the bike, and he's like, "Whoa, you know, you painted the fender." And so you were already painting by then. Yeah, okay. Yeah. That was uh, that was back about ten years ago. Wow. And um, and eventually he said, "You know, you want to you want to buy that bike?" Yeah. And I said, "Of course." Are you kidding? <laughs> so he sold me the bike, and then I I finished it, and the bike never came with any stripes on the tank. They were never put on. It was all black. He was just doing it one step at a time. Yeah. So when, when it came down to put stripes on it, I thought, well, let's just go a little crazy, and we put the uh, Scotty's logo on it. Wow. And what, so what, like, period correct aftermarket parts are, are on this bike? The aftermarket parts are, are kind of simple. 
One that you notice right away are the hubs. Okay. The wheel hubs are George Meyer racing hubs. They're wow. full width hubs. Before you could get full width hubs for BMWs, remember they had their early hubs like like this one here. Got it. Right? Yeah, that's, that's what yeah. was available at the time. Well, if you wanted to go racing, you'd burn those up real quick. I see. So if you wanted to go racing, you'd come up with something like this with a full width uh, design. This has a 35 millimeter wide brake pad. Wow. And so you can really stop with it. And then uh, we put those chrome rims on it. Yeah. Um, and then the other thing that's interesting about this bike, besides the fact that it has an R69S motor in it, is uh, the handlebars. And those I just had laying around in my stash of crap, you know, like from yeah. the Honda days. Yeah, yeah, kind of a clubman. Stuff. Yeah. yeah, so yeah. I, I thought, well, let's just see what they look like. And I put them on there, and I'm like, wow, I love this. And and not, it's comfortable riding it's, position? It is ultimately comfortable. You can try it. Really? Like, hop on. Oh, man. Yeah. All right. I, I, I'm not going to say no to that. <laughs> I probably have about 25,000 miles on this bike. Really? Yeah. Oh, it is comfortable. Yeah. I've, oh, look, it's it's got the uh, European... Uh, European speedometer, speedometer yeah. which I've disconnected. Really? Because I had Palo Alto speedometer rebuild this for me. Yeah. And they don't last very long. Oh. So I disconnected it and I'm using this bicycle computer. Nice. Practical. I've got a powerlet outlet here for touring. Oh, sweet. Right? So, yeah, this is really your rider. Yep. That's awesome. So neat. It has um, unusual pipes on it. These are. I believe that these are for an R67 slash oh. one. Uh, I can never remember if it's a bird tail or a fish tail. Yeah. I, think, I think BMW calls that a fish tail. Oh, that's a real BMW pipe. Yep, yep. Wow. So that's really not designed for this model, but I like the way they look. And they drag a little bit when you corner really hard. Do so they? that looks really cool. Little indicator. You scrape a little bit of pipe on the ground. Nice. And this piece right here is really special to me. Um, this is a luggage rack that Joe built. Oh, cool. So, what a great momentum. I really like that. Yeah, so um, I put that on there. And the tail light? The tail light is uh, stock for that model, although this one, this year would not have had a brake light. Oh, okay. So this one has a little orange indicator in the back. I see. It would have normally had a tail light bike like this that was just solid. Okay. This is a 51 or a 52 bike. Okay. I've had it apart uh, a couple of times just to go through it over yeah. the years. I've had this bike on the road for about, I don't know, maybe six years or so. How about that oil pressure gauge? That's a seeding rock part, I believe. Oh. Yeah, it just adds a little bit of bling. Yeah, that's really cool. And the, the air filter cover, is that usually chrome? No, those are usually silver. Okay. But it came to me chrome. I think that was on the bike when I got it. Got it. I don't know if it's correct for this model, but it, it's there and it, you know, it works well. I don't, even, I don't even run a filter in it. It's just an empty canister. Got it. This bike has never had an air filter on it. Really? Yeah. And the pipes, when I got the pipes from Mark Huggett, yeah. I, I drilled out the mufflers. There's nothing inside the mufflers. Just straight flow. Yeah, they're just straight. <laughs> I love it. Well, this is an awesome bike. I love that you ride the heck out of it. That's what, I mean, that's what these things are all about, right? I, I have a set of a Eclipse luggage that I put on it. You oh, know, really? With canvas bags on the back and a big square tank bag that fits here and it's a very comfortable bike you can cruise all day at about 60 miles an hour wow. and as long as the road is not too rough yeah. because you only have about an inch of suspension travel or so really just and when an you inch. hit the top you really hit the top it really bottoms out oh yeah wait so this is a uh i guess conventional style fork mm -hmm. would it have had an earl fork? no they didn't invent that until 55. really so bmw was the first company as far as I know, somebody's going to correct me, but I believe that BMW is the first company that come out with hydraulic forks. Wow. It's very rugged. It doesn't, you know, it's not going to break or anything like that. One time I was uh, riding uh, with a couple of friends of mine. Um, let's see, I, uh, Pete Young was on his like 38 or 39 Veliset. Oh my gosh. Uh, and uh, Paul Dorleans was on his Triumph riding two up with his wife Susie. Really? And we were on some road that... I'm sure you've been in this situation before where you're, you, you, you think you're going to take a shortcut. Right. You look on the map, you're like, oh, I think that road is going right. to go where we think it's going to go. Right. Everybody's in consensus. And yeah. then you start traveling on that road. And then maybe an hour or so later, you're just like, I don't know if that was the right decision. <laughs> ah, yeah. Well, 
it's an adventure. That was this this particular situation was kind of like that, but it actually turned out to be an epic ride. Yeah. It was not negative at all. We had an amazing time. The road got narrower and narrower and narrower. It started off as a nice asphalt windy road through right. the forest, right. and then eventually developed into this ruddy Jeep trail oh. with like literally two lanes of of mud. Oh my god! And right. you were on these Metzlers? Yeah. Yeah. Oh my gosh. These are actually remarkable tires off-road. Really? They're very good tires on-road and off-road. I highly recommend. They're Metzler C5, I believe is what they're called, or Block C. Got it. And um, anyway, we, we followed this road for a good hour. I think it was about 50 miles of dirt road. Oh my gosh. And eventually started climbing in elevation. We ended up on the top of a mountain where there was a fire lookout. So this was a fire access road. Yeah, right, right, right. And uh, it just didn't go anywhere. It just went to the top. And then we met the fire lookout guy. And his name was Father John, I believe. And he, uh, he was so happy to see us because he hadn't seen people in a long time. He, right. took, he took us upstairs into his lookout apartment. We got a full tour. Oh, but the view we hung was out awesome. for a while. Oh. It, the view was amazing. I took oh. all these panoramic shots of the of the of the three of us uh, hanging great out up there. Story. It was a great ride. So that that's, was really fun. Is that a hand shifter there? That is a hand shifter. If, you can shift it. It's really great for finding neutral because you know you know how it yeah. is to find neutral on an old yeah. bike. So you can reach down and shift it in neutral, but it's sequential. So first gear is back, and then neutral, and then second gear. <laughs> there it goes. <laughs> There's third, and then fourth. Wow. Now, as you can see, when you're actually riding, it's yeah. impossible to find the right gear. Right. Because it goes right past where you want it to go. Oh. So my belief is that. They, uh, they created this as a neutral finder. Now, I was talking with um, Fred, the uh, archivist for BMW, at some point, and he told me that the reason that they created this was a marketing gimmick. Really? Because they were afraid to lose the old timers who liked the hand shift. The hand shift. So they, they figured, well, look, if we put a hand shift mechanism on the bike, the old timers will be able to fab up some sign of, some kind of lever and we can still get their sales. Wow. But if we shift completely to a foot shift, yeah. we're gonna lose all those guys that are used to shifting. Wow. Uh, but another story that I, I heard is even more exciting, and that was when you were when you had a sidecar, yep. if you were in the war or whatever, yeah. and you're dry if you were in a sidecar, you typically were an officer. Got right? it. Yeah. So if you were you had your driver who was like basically the uh, the red shirt on Star Trek, yeah, right? They're yeah. gonna get shot first, right? and then you're gonna be stuck in the sidecar with no driver. Oh. So the idea was that if you were in that situation, you could take cover in your sidecar, grab the handlebar, and then you'd be able to brake and, and accelerate and shift and get out of there. No way! And drive the, drive the vehicle from the sidecar. So that was another story I heard. I, I like that one you, better. I, <laughs> I think the only thing left to do is start this thing. Here it run. Yeah, what do you think? It's a good plan. All right. I don't use a battery on this one. Oh, I, really? I just never have put a battery in it because it's just another thing to maintain. Right. I built it really. Wow. It's just it's running, good. just running like a watch. Yeah, it's leaking from everywhere now. <laughs> it's all good. That's so cool. Well, that was absolutely incredible, Scotty. I can't tell you how much I appreciate you having me here, sharing this bike with, with all of us and, uh, and your workshop. And Scotty, you're in Murphy's, but you take work from everywhere. If you can get it to us, we'll work on it. Oh, so yeah. cool. Yep. If it's BMW. Yeah, old BMWs. <laughs> yeah, old BMWs. BMWs. And are you still doing Isetta work too? We do occasionally. Okay. Although nowadays, since we're so busy with the bikes, we really just take in powertrains and stuff like that, cool. not complete cars. Right, but right. If you do have a complete guitar car, let me, let me know. Maybe it's a winter project. Awesome. Yeah. Well, cool. Well, you know the drill, folks. Next week, we'll be back with a whole new bike and a whole new beer. Scotty, Cheers. man. Cheers. <laughs>
and I'm gonna make this into my camping vehicle. Got it. You know, because um, I like going camping with the club. If you're not a member of the BMW Airhead Club, I highly recommend checking it out. If you like to camp and you like to ride, it's a great club. So cool. Check it out on the internet. But uh, I figured I would show you this bike. It's a 1979 R100 RT, it's first year of the RT. And uh, I got a whole bunch of really cool extras with it, like those Bilstein shocks. Yeah, those are cool. And it came with the, um, uh, I think they're made by Luftmeister, the, the, the gas tanks that come on the outside. Oh, auxiliary tanks. Auxiliary tanks, are, and they match the, the cherry smoke paint, so that's pretty cool. Wow. And I got a really sweet leather Corbin seat with it. Nice. And check this out. It's got the James Bond pop-out headlights. No Ready? way. No way. That is so cool. Is that, cool or what? that is so cool. Wow. <laughs> well, we'll have to follow up with you then on this one. Yeah, this will be my mountain touring. Yeah, vehicle. once you're done, let me know. We'll we'll do a feature on this. Right on. That's so cool. Anything else? Nope. No, I just wanted to show you that. Just cool got bike. the dirt bike over there and maybe maybe another bike will feature another time. Yep. <laughs> right on, Scotty. Thank you so much, man. Catch you later, Bill. We'll see you soon.